friends we have maltesh bharadwaj with us uh, maltesh is from bangalore and maltesh has a phenomenal story uh, he did his undergraduate in 2011 2013 he finished his uh, masters in aerospace engineering from a university in netherlands delft worked in airbus up uh, if you stay in uh, uh, if you travel uh, in a320 that is made by airbus in toulouse so he worked there for 3 years decided to come back became a wedding photographer and then wrote neat and uh, he has cleared neat this year with a score of 572 from karnataka he could have uh, gotten admissions in a lot of colleges uh in government colleges but he has decided to go to a private medical college bh bgs global institute in bangalore so uh there are a lot of u turns in uh, malatesh's life we will try and understand this but uh, you will find out bottom of uh bottom line story is that uh, if you want to do it age is just a number is that fair malatesh uh, am i am i right, right about it absolutely absolutely right <laughs> Okay, so Maltesh, tell me, uh, tell us this thing. So, uh, uh, walk us through your journey. So, 2011, you did your B.Tech in mechanical engineering from uh, Bangalore, and uh, then why did you go for a, a, uh, aerospace engineering uh, from uh, Netherlands? Uh, well, I as I was uh, talking that time, like uh, I wanted to do aerospace engineering in one of the best universities in the world. And uh, while I applied for a lot of universities, uh, Delft University of Technology is regarded as one of the best. Uh, if not in Europe and in the world too, so most of the parts of Airbus A380, the outer fuselage covers is actually made by the Delft University of Technology. The design and manufacturing is done by them, uh, and uh, it's called Glare. The outer covering, the fuselage cover of the A380 is done by Delft University of Technology. So it was a when I got a seat in Delft University of Technology, I thought, okay, this is the best thing that can happen to me, and I gladly took the seat from the college. And I did the two years of masters in aerodynamic design. Excellent. So uh, then you joined Airbus in France, yes. and uh, worked there for four years uh, between Airbus and uh, Alstom. So uh, yes. why did you want to come? Uh, why did you come back in two thousand sixteen to India? Uh, yeah, uh, because I got married, and uh, then I had to take care of my parents. Like they live alone, and I'm the only son. so they will not uh, even though they came there for a few days they did, they couldn't adjust to all those things like no the language barrier and all yeah. this problems they had so i thought it is a human thing for me to do is to come back and take care of them because they have uh, taken excellent care of me so that's why i came back it was a decision for a personal reason you never yeah. regret it and while no no i don't i didn't regret anything for a single moment for me uh, i mean it was more comfortable here actually because this is a place i have been born and brought up in i had a lot of friends here and it made i mean after having worked there for being outside for like 5 years uh, coming back to india was actually a great relief for me hmm so 2011 btec 2013 uh, masters from one of the best aerospace uh, university in netherlands After that, Airbus, Alstom. Now you are back in India, 2016. So what did you do after that? Well, uh, I actually joined a small company here. It was a startup, uh, and then uh, I actually started working. And the work culture was not that great, and I could not adjust to working in India or having not worked here. So it was uh, pretty overwhelming for me. So then I was like, okay, it's time. Anyways, I wanted to start my own company for a very long time. I wanted to be my own boss. So I thought, okay, why not? This is the opportunity. I'll use my skills to my advantage. And uh, I have been a photographer, like a uh, hobby photographer, from like past like seventeen years. Be from a kid, uh, from being a kid, I have been using cameras. So, like a lot of my friends suggested. Uh, I mean, I shot a wedding of my friend once, and he was like, "Dude, why don't you take this as your professionality? You're like excellent at this." So I was like, "Yeah, why not?" <laughs> so i'll take this as a profession and i become a photographer and i have this uh, wedding company called smilographers and uh, we shoot a lot of events and uh, weddings uh, i have like 6 7 people employed under me currently so you started uh, this uh, wedding photography company called smilographer students uh, the instagram account of the smilographer company is uh, given in video description 
so you started this now where does need come in sir? then uh, so you are age uh, 30 now yeah 31 actually 31 okay so how did this uh, this thing about need come about uh, when did you decide that you want to you wanted to write need uh, become a doctor when uh, when did this happen and why did this happen why is very important why did this happen uh, uh yes uh, see as i was talking about uh, like i started my company and i was earning handsomely every month and uh, being a wedding photographer is actually a lucrative business it's like uh, pretty nice uh, if you have the right skill set for it but then uh, once i was doing this uh, like everything was going smooth and sailing but uh, i started feeling very hollow inside my whole thing i have this big big degrees in my name and i am doing all this photography thing that is like completely unrelated and uh, i will i started feeling completely hollow i was like what is this i'm like the life has become more about money now so i was like okay then i was like okay why did i come i mean i started contemplating why did i come here so then i remembered okay when i started uh, wanted to do my i mean when i want uh, started my engineering i had also got a medical seat but then uh, i didn't i didn't take up the medical seat and i chose to do engineering because of my brother and at uh, that time i had my younger brother he died of cancer and uh, complications related to it during my counseling process so he always wanted to be an aerospace engineer and he had this wild dreams about aircrafts and uh, all these things always playing with them always talking about them he was like completely passionate about it he was just like three years younger than me and i was like i was completely devastated and i was a teen like i didn't know what to do but then i decided i will take his dream and fulfill it because life has robbed him of whatever he wanted to do so i was like yeah i have got a seat i can do it any time i am alive i will do this so i took up engineering and i wanted i specifically uh, specifically took up mechanical engineering so that i could do aerospace so i got in a very good college it is like top 2 in karnataka the uh, college that i got I finished my engineering degrees and worked hard for my aerospace degree in uh, uh, to get into one of the best colleges in uh, the world and then once i got everything once i even worked in that field also i felt at one point okay this is it i have fulfilled my brother's dreams i have taken a, taken it up and i am done with it so then at that point i was like okay i think this is the time i have to live for my own i have to catch up with my dreams so th- that then i was like okay i wanted to be a doctor from a from my childhood so why not do it now was the point was the thing the thought that came into my mind when i was going through all these phases but then uh, even the age gap was also relaxed the upper cap was also taken out because of a supreme yeah. court case yeah so i thought okay this is a sign i have to start it now uh, then once i started I, I, even though the thought came into my mind that i have to write neat and start studying to, uh, for it i didn't have time because i had taken up this full time job i have to look after my family i have to do so many things i i was putting it forward every day i was like okay tomorrow i will see next year i will see to day after tomorrow but yeah. then uh, in a march of uh, 21 uh, i got covid and it was a very serious case of uh, delta infection and i had to be hospitalized for uh, five days i was in the icu uh, in bangalore only and then in one of those days i was actually unconscious people told me that i was not awake for one uh, whole day the doctor was like then i was like oh my god this is it this is the short life i have lived and this is coming to an end so what have i done in my whole life i started contemplating on my bed so uh, it was only me and all the beep of the monitor t t t so i was thinking about what i have done okay this is it i am done so then i was like okay whatever i have done i am pretty happy with it but if i go out alive from this place i will try and finish my part of it i will work towards what i have was supposed to do and i will achieve it is what came into my mind in march 21 so i started recovering from that so once i recovered from covid came back out of the hospital i had made a promise to myself right so it was time for me to keep the promise and that time i completely decided i am going to forget no stopping no thinking tomorrow day after whatever happens i am not going to settle for it i am going to start preparation now i will write if the seat is supposed to come to me it will come if i don't get it then I, there is always next year so with this mindset i started my preparation for neat uh, in 20 in 2021 of march with like four months left for the exam yeah 
Yeah. So what did you uh, what did you do in four months? Oh well, I actually couldn't do much because uh, I just always a wedding photography thing. So by the way, one thing uh, confirm to me one thing. I, I'm assuming you had biology in class uh, 11th and 12th, yes, right? That's yes, why you yes. got the seat first time. So yes. that was not a challenge. Uh, I have come across individuals who have uh, also flipped from engineering to medical by becoming uh, a private candidate, writing it through. A, you didn't have to do that thing. No, no, no. I didn't have to do that because I had taken PCMB as my combination uh, in my state board. So I had yeah. opportunities for both. So, and uh, well, I actually, when I started, thought of uh, studying for uh, NEET, I, I mean, starting studying for NEET, I didn't have much idea as to where to start it from. So, and also like once I came out of the hospital, even though I was uh, recovered, I was kind of constantly on antivirals and all the time I was drowsy. Yeah. And, and uh, I had also a lot of backlogs before this uh, COVID part, I, all the this ones that a project I had taken up and also bookings that I had for the next three, four months. So I was yeah. completely busy on all these things. So I was like, okay, in order to start properly, I want to strategize first. I didn't just jump into it, just start studying from somewhere. I was like, okay, let me come up with a strategy. Once I am done with it, I will start efficiently. So at that time I was like, okay, neat. I have to write exam. This is gonna test how much I can get right in three hours. And the only way I can do it is to practice MCQs. I don't have time for anything else. I have no time to sit concepts that this and all. I have literally no time for all these things. So I formulated all these things in like next one week or uh, 10 days. I made a proper plan. I told whenever I get time, the only thing I'm going to do is just first study theory for how much ever time I can, like biology especially, I will study the first theory part and I will do chapter wise MCQs, then and there. If I get something wrong, I will correct it then and there. And I so that the next time I should not make the same mistake again. So You are making it uh, sound very, very simple. If <laughs> So... Yeah. Uh, it seems you remembered a lot of things out of uh, your uh, class 11th or 12th. Uh, it seems almost impossible. What you are explaining uh, seems uh, out of the dream world. So uh, make it more believable for us. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, that is the thing. Like most of the people when they think about it, think about actually the thing is when we think about an exam, we always think about what is there to study, how much we have left to study. We do, uh, we normally don't approach it with the fact that we need to only study what the exam is going to ask us for. Uh, well, uh, we actually take it we, when we think about exams, we actually uh, think it like, think about it like a huge mountain. But uh, most of the times when we see previous year papers or anything, the patterns are pretty straightforward. They ask important questions and they also ask things that are very relevant to the exam. They don't actually go searching for some things that are like not even there in the syllabus or something like that. Maybe, yeah, for in every subject, there'll be like one or about five hard questions in every this one. That is total of 15 questions out of 180 which doesn't even make a difference whether you studied it or not. You can just leave those questions and still be in a medical college. Yeah. So focus on things like instead of worrying about hard things and trying to do a lot uh, and forgetting easy things, we have to first focus on what is important. Like 80, 85% of the paper is completely straight forward from the book. And there is no, uh, I mean, um, uh, ultra see the questions there. It is all you go if you have studied if you know the concept you can just tick mark and come home that is how most of the questions are but students so you, are, uh, you practice a lot of mcq did you also write uh, a lot of mock tests or you did not uh, did not write mock yes tests? sir i i uh, the my whole preparation strategy was to practice mcqs and but did you write mock tests uh, were you writing tests before uh, yes. how many mock tests did you write i think i gave a mock test every sunday fair enough every every yeah, sunday also, and also sir. Whenever I had time, I made sure that I gave a mock test and it didn't matter when I used to take it. Even in the middle of the night, I used to take because if I didn't have time, I was like, okay, whenever I have time, I will do mock test and correct, correct it. So giving mock test is not a big deal, but where students go wrong is like they don't analyze it. They feel very lazy to analyze and correct their mistakes. They don't understand if you don't correct your mistake, you will commit the same mistake in the exam. And you're not writing mock test just to test how much marks you'll get. You are writing it just to see how much you don't get right. Yeah. So uh, students, uh, uh, to summarize uh, what uh, we have heard from Maltesh, uh, whenever you feel like, uh, 
what you want to do in life it's never too late maltesh is an example he wrote neat at age 30 uh, or 31 and uh, he's going to start his mbbs journey now most of the people start it at 17 or 18 it doesn't matter life expectancy is much much higher in india it's close to 70 years so it doesn't make sense that once you have decided it uh, it was your passion to become a doctor it's never too late you saw an interview of akriti she is 30 did bits filani and then uh, she decided to do mbbs so there are a lot of examples there second thing is uh, what we are also hearing from maltesh is if you have confidence right and if you look at the exam like it is there is a syllabus there is a timeline in which you have to prepare there are going to be mcqs if you plan out properly uh, but uh, i want to tell you the gentleman that you are seeing on the screen uh, if you are not able to see it already he has a lot of confidence in his own capabilities and you, he won't be scared too easily a lot of students not only are they preparing they are also scared like hell you can't clear an exam like neat or for that matter any exam if you are scared you have to be extremely confident about yourself which maltesh was and he continuously analyzes uh, uh, his mistakes and 572 uh, he is joining a private medical college uh, in bangalore which is close to his home because he has to take care of his family as well otherwise he could have gotten a government medical college as well maltesh uh, any final words from you from uh, anyone who is watching this video yes uh, please be prepared don't think about uh, an exam just for the sake of writing an exam think about it in the way that they are thinking about you if they want to choose somebody who is well versed in the topic that they are gonna give they are gonna test you in the things that they want don't unnecessarily pressure yourselves into a corner and be depressed and not study and procrastinate just study relevant things be confident in yourself you will easily crack exams like me that is it and please don't back down please don't back down very good all right so on this positive note thank you very much maltesh it was a pleasure talking to you and uh, best of luck to uh, this journey that you are starting uh, uh, hope you become a, a very big doctor